Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to the Daily Check-In for November 17th, 2020. It's Tuesday, which means it's Terraform Tuesday. That's right. We're going to be talking about Terraform, and specifically, I wanted to get into Terraform functions a little bit. These are those little helpful functions that you can have in HashiCorp configuration language that help you do things transforming data, you know, iterating through arrays and maps, all the kind of crazy fun stuff that you want to do with Terraform. That is what functions are there for. And I actually did a whole series of posts. This is going back probably three years because this was pre.12. I did a whole series of posts about every single function in Terraform. It was function of the day. And I did one every day because the documentation on the Terraform site was not that good. In retrospect, it probably would have been more helpful to just contribute to their docs instead of writing my own. <laughs> but I, I don't know. It was, it was a project that was something fun to do. Anyway, so that's what I want to talk about today. Before I get into that, I just want to remind you real quick that I do have a Patreon set up now and the links are down in the description. Basically, the uh, for $2 a month, you can help support my uh, clear YouTube addiction. <laughs> and you can also help support more intricate and interesting demos and higher quality content because the more that I have uh, from this, the less I have to concentrate on other things that aren't this. You know, got, got to pay the bills still. So <laughs> that's the way it is. Anyway, so if you can support, that's great. If not, I completely understand. Let's check in. How you doing? How's it going? How's Tuesday for you? Yeah? Did you? Well, it's getting cold around here, and you may have noticed that, uh, depending on where you live. So maybe you're enjoying the little, the, the fact that it's gotten cold. I actually saw a few flakes of snow today, which, I mean, at this point, that's not that surprising. We're in mid-November in Pennsylvania, but last year it barely snowed at all. So I'm kind of hoping for a bit of snow this year, like more than six inches, because the kids have fun with it. It doesn't really matter for me because I don't have to go anywhere. And I mean, it's, it's kind of pretty. <laughs> so hopefully you're getting whatever weather you want wherever you are. Let's dive into Terraform functions. And I'm going to be like, oh, my goodness, I'm all over the screen. Better. I'm going to be completely honest. I did not necessarily prepare for this. Let me go ahead and share out my screen. So, okay, we've got VS Code as usual, and I do not have a demo set up for this because I thought it would be fun. I thought it'd be an interesting little experiment to see how far we could get in a relatively short period of time just trying to get some functions working. So I can show you kind of how I build one of these demos, but also how to use Terraform functions. So we're doing a, we're doing a little bit of both. So what would we do first? Well, the first thing is I got to create a new directory for today. So we'll call this 2020 11, 17. There we go. And then usually what I do is just create a file in there called main.tf. So there we go. That's really all I need to do. And because I have the language engine installed, I get this no root module thing found for this folder. And that's because it's right. I don't really have anything in my root module yet. It's completely empty and I haven't initialized the configuration. So it's completely empty. Now, because I just want to mess around with functions, I don't necessarily want to interact with any cloud providers or anything like that. So what I could do very simply is just set up a locals. So let's do locals and we'll throw that in there. And now I can create some local variables inside my Terraform configuration that I might want to mess around with. Now, what sort of local variables? Well, I probably want some strings so I can do str1 and make that equal to tacos, of course. What else would it be? Duh. And then we can do string two and we can call that burritos. And if I could spell, that would be incredibly helpful. Okay. So now we've got our two strings. Now, what else would I want to mess around with besides strings? Well, I might want to mess around with numbers. Mm, that's not super interesting, but uh, let's do n1 and we'll set that equal to zero and we'll do n2 and uh, n2. Woo and set that equal to one. Okay, now I've got two numerical values. Uh, what other types do we have? Well, we there's the Boolean values, true and false, but that's not like, those are just values. We don't really need to wonder about that too much. How about a list? What if we wanna create a list? So we'll call this L1, and we can create a list of strings. So we can do tacos and uh, enchiladas. And hopefully I'm spelling that right. 
All right, so now we have a list and maybe I want a map. So I can do map one and those curly braces let it know that I'm creating a map and we can say um, meet and we can set, well, no, we want a key. So we're not gonna put that in quotes. We'll say meet and we can set that equal to chicken. And then we could say cheese and we can set that to cheddar jack. All right, so now we've got a bunch of local values that we can mess around with with functions. Now, how are we gonna get the information out of this? Well, there's a couple different ways you could do it. One, you could use Terraform console to do that because I now have some local values I can mess around with. So let me go ahead and save that file and go into the directory down here. There we go. And I'm gonna run Terraform in it. <laughs> I know, and there's basically nothing in here, right? It's just gonna run in it and it's not gonna download any providers because there's no providers to download. It's not gonna download any plugins, but it will initialize this and create that .terraform folder over here. So at least I have that much in here. Okay, so now that I've initialized, I could in theory drop into Terraform console and start using some of these locals values with a function. So let's pick a random function from the list of functions that exists. And where does that list exist? Let's grab the browser. There we go. Okay, so I'm on the Terraform page, uh, the docs, and I'm under docs configuration functions.html. So there we go. That's where you could go if you wanted to get to these built-in functions. Obviously, these are all for Terraform.12 and later. The old 11.1s are there, but hopefully you're not on 11.11 .11 anymore because they're pretty much deprecating that. So uh, here, we got a bunch of functions here. What about a good string function? Let's do a good string function. And what can we do with that? Let's say, well, there's a lower. I bet there's an upper. There is an upper function. So we can basically run upper and it should uppercase everything that's in there. Now it shows an example here. You can just drop right into Terraform console and do that. So let's jump back to here and I'll do Terraform console. That drops us into the console. And this basically just interprets commands, right? So let's say we want to use the upper function. What I can do is just type upper and put a string in there. And once I do that, hit enter and it will evaluate that function. Now, what if I wanna use one of these locals, right? So I should be able to do upper and just directly reference the local, use local, cause I'm doing a local value and then the local value that I want to reference. So I'll say string one and close parentheses and hit enter. And there we go. It took that value that's stored in locals and moved it to uppercase. So now you can see if you wanna just mess around with functions, you can set a bunch of test values in locals and then you can drop into the Terraform console and just evaluate what's stored in those locals values. And if you wanted to get into more complicated type things. What if you wanted to flatten a map into a list or something? Let's go over and uh, let's take a look at another function here. What do we got? Okay, so there's a bunch here. Uh, collection functions is probably what we're talking about. So what if I wanted to do something keys? So what does the keys function do? Well, if I have a map and I use the keys function, it should just give me the keys of that map. That seems pretty useful. Well, we can test that. We can just do keys here, and then my map, which is local.m1, and close parentheses, and there we go. It gave me a list. It's a list type with the two keys that are in there. That seems pretty useful. So as you can see, if you wanna test out any of the functions that exist in Terraform, all you need to do is create one of the values in locals and then use it in one of these functions and you can see exactly what that function is going to do to the values that are stored in your locals. And you can do things like it's showing right here where you just generate it on the fly, but sometimes that can be a little bit difficult to create a more complex data type directly in line. Wouldn't it be easier if you can just reuse it? Uh, what else is in here? Uh, coalesce, what does that do? If you coalesce, It'll take any number of arguments and return the first one. That's kind of, there are absolutely reasons to use that. You can do contains, so you can see if something is contained within a list. So why don't we do that? Let's do contains. So I'm gonna do contains and we'll do parentheses here. And the first thing you wanna do is give the list. So I'll do local.l1, that's my list. 
And then what value am I looking for? I'm looking for tacos and I'll close it here and it evaluates to true. Now the downside is on the console, some things don't work. Like hitting up arrow is not gonna get you the thing you just typed. And that's, uh, it's kind of annoying. But unfortunately, that's just kind of where the console is today. But hopefully this gives you a good idea. If you are thinking about using functions and you wanna know how a function works and you wanna test it, the console is absolutely the way to go. And setting up a quick locals uh, that will give you a bunch of local values to mess around with is also extremely useful. And it gets you away from having to type those long strings because like I said, the up arrow doesn't work. So if you wanna test the same thing, at the very minimum, you're typing out the function again. Why would you wanna type out all these really long values in addition? So uh, hopefully that's helpful to you. I didn't know where this was gonna go. I just knew I wanted to do functions in the console and boom, this is what happened. And it happened pretty quickly and a little smoothly. I, it's like I've gotten some practice at this. So that'll do it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching. A reminder, if you can support, I really appreciate it. Go to that Patreon page. You can do the base minimum, or if you want some stickers, I am getting stickers made. So you can do the second tier up and you'll get stickers and my eternal gratitude. Uh, that's all I have for today. Until next time, stay healthy and stay safe out there. Bye for now.